Thank you so much. It's an honor to speak with you about normal pressure masquerators. I uh, practice both in the divisions of glaucoma and neuro-ophthalmology at Penn. Um, I have some commercial and intellectual disclosures, none of which are re relevant to this talk. My first uh, slide is an audience response question. Which of the following clinical findings are most indicative of the need for neuroimaging? We have decreased vision, a questionable APD, dyschromatopsia, or an asymmetric visual field defect. So it looks like we're pretty spread, which means the talk will be very uh, relevant for this audience. Can we go back to my slides? Thank you. So I'm going to present two case presentations, and I'm going to deconstruct some red flags that I use for the diagnosis of alternative diagnoses of, uh, in patients that are presenting with presumed normal tension glaucoma. I want to take a little bit of time to discuss the clinical, the, the process of clinical reasoning. For me, really fits into two systems. When I'm in glaucoma practice, I have to get through large sums of patients. So there's the quick, recognizable patient symptoms and clinical uh, presentation that leads to a diagnosis. But uh, there's also the system too that requires slower thinking, slowing down, and collecting a few, a little bit more information to arrive at the diagnosis. So hopefully, I'll give some red flags that allow you to shift from one system one to system two patients. First case is a 57-year-old male with decreased vision in both eyes. It was more prominent in the right eye. He had been seen by two providers, one of which diagnosed him with a uh, arterial occlusion. Um, and then the other was a glaucoma specialist that had placed him on latanoprost. He continued to progress, so he saw me. Um, he had pretty significantly decreased vision in the right eye. The pressures off the latanoprost were 18 and 17. He did have an APD, um, and he had a supratemporal defect in presumably the unaffected eye. His gonio exam was wide open and no signs of recession. These were his visual fields. Um, I, they were read previously as un unreliable. The patient English wasn't their first language, and they were concerned about the visual fields. And these were the OCTs, which showed um, uh, thin areas in the uh, right nerve. I did a Goldman visual field and confirmed that in the right eye, he had a small island of vision. In the left eye, he had a supertemporal defect, which is consistent with an anterior chiasmal junctional scotoma seen on uh, visual field analysis. Uh, subsequent imaging studies revealed this to be a optic nerve sheath meningioma, and I still remember the day I was dropping my kid off at childcare. I got a call from the radiologist that said, your patient has a midline shift. What should I do? So he went right to the emergency room. So I knew this was a great case to present. So there are key parts of the history that are important. Uh, early glaucoma doesn't typically present with acute visual symptoms. The quality of their systems tend to not be a dimming or a decreased visual acuity. And this patient, despite the language barrier, did complain of that. And then I'm always very leery of atypical open angle glaucomas. But what in the clinical exam kind of gave me a red flag was the visual acuity. Most non-glaucomatous optic neuropathy, unless the patient has snuffed, has not poor visual acuity, and count fingers is pretty poor. Most non-glaucomatous optic neuropathies will have significantly reduced color testing, whereas glaucoma patients, because the, their defects tend to be more tritonous, aren't necessarily picked up in this common Ishihara color plates that we use in the clinic. And then the APD, uh, rare and mild or early disease, and then I'm always very skeptical of temporal defects or nasal thinning on OCT. The final um, case I'm going to talk about is a 48-year-old female. She was given glasses to uh, correct her complaint of dimming vision. She had a mild uh, history of mixed connective tissue disease and no other family history. Um, her exam showed pretty preserved uh, vision. Her uh, pressures were normal. Uh, I will tell you that her color, she did have a, a questionable APD in the left eye. Her colors were down in the left eye, and she was slow in the right eye. Um, again, gonio exam was normal. Those were her visual fields from 2016, consistent with some at superior at, um, thin areas in the left eye. And then they came to me because she progressed in a short period of time to that. So the next audience response question is, what's the next course of management that you would select for this patient? Would you add bromonidine? 
Would you select an MRI brain with contrast just to rule everything out? Would you add um, uh, natarsidil and book the patient for surgery for rapid progression of visual fields? Or would you use an MRI, order an MRI with special attention to a particular location? Good, so BD, that's exactly what I expected with the audience. Hopefully I'll unveil why D is the correct answer. Um, can we go back to my slides? So I ended up getting a dedicated orbital um, imaging study and what you can see here is in the left eye, she's got a classic donut sign for involvement of the optic nerve sheath. Because of the presentation, it was diagnosed as an optic nerve sheath meningioma. And if you look in the right eye, she has a small involvement of the right eye as well, which is why her color testing was so slow. Um, I wanna stop here and say, if you do see this, because of the way the patient presented, there, you, you wouldn't be wrong to order blood tests to rule out any other causes of perineuritis. Then I'll do the following repeat audience response questions to make sure there's been some progress. Which of the following clinical findings are most indicative of the need for neuroimaging? Is it decreased vision, a questionable APD, dyschromatopsia, or an asymmetric visual field defect? Good. So I, it, looks like there's a great learning curve. I really do rely on those color plates, especially in my glaucoma clinic and my patients with normal tension glaucoma. All my technicians know that I need them to not only test it, but identify whether they're slow with their responses to the questions. You would not have been wrong to pick decreased vision, but again, that's not as sensitive as the uh, color plates for optic neuropathy. Can we go back to my slides? In conclusion, I want to highlight Optic nerve cupping is going to occur regardless of the insult. The hint will be a careful examination of the optic nerve. Usually optic neuropathies, the rim is involved. And then normal tension glaucoma for me is a diagnosis of exclusion. I'm always very, very leery of this diagnosis altogether and start to think of other causes, particularly in the complex patients. And then the red flags we went over. Thank you.